Uh, hello everyone. So in this session, I'll be discussing about uh, you know uh, adolescent nutrition, pre-pregnancy nutrition, uh, pregnant mothers' nutrition, lactation nutrition, uh, extremely important as part of our first thousand days. You know, uh, and first thousand days not necessarily start from conception actually. You know, and uh, I would add, like to add many more days than first thousand days. And uh, you know, it's it's a total life cycle, right? I mean, you want your girl children, of course, boy children too, but uh, girl girl children to grow well, to have a good height, you know, to have good nutrition during adolescent phase so that they can have a uh, uh, and then good pre-pregnancy weight and nutrition, you know. So it is a whole cycle uh, and uh, I think it is important that uh, I touch base upon adolescent nutrition uh, as well as your, you know, your pre-pregnancy nutrition because, uh, you know, that is the foundation, right. Because what happens when the conception takes place, uh, first three to four weeks or even six weeks mothers they do not even know that they are pregnant, right. So all the nutrition that, uh, that uh, uh, you know, fetus is getting is mainly coming from mother's uh, storage and, you know, uh, whatever food that she is eating. So, uh, I think it is we do not need to wait till she becomes pregnant and then start telling her what food to eat, okay. Uh, I think it is important, you know, you start at any any time, any phase that you see that person, okay. And primarily for women because, you know, obviously, you know, they carry this pregnancy for 9 months and then she is going to breastfeed and, you know, so uh, for her health is extremely important. Not that I undermine, um, uh, you know, uh, gentlemen's health, but uh, I think uh, to have a uh, healthy, you know, tall uh, and intelligent population, we will have to take care of our women. Okay. So, let us start with adolescent uh, uh, nutrition. Uh, of course, we have prepared uh, amazing recipes for adolescent. Uh, we have also shown like how adolescent grow and uh, you know what all things are required for the growth. Uh, main thing I want to say that uh, adolescent is the second phase in human's life after first uh, say one year or so that they grow very fast. Okay. So, even if you have suppose missed that age uh, of intensive growth and you know if child has missed good nutrition during that phase, you know uh, this is the second phase where we can uh, basically you know uh, kind of stimulate child's growth and she, she can uh, hopefully overcome those uh, you know side effects of poor nutrition during first few months of life or first few years of life. You know, so uh, again, protein, protein, protein. You know, uh, I'm very kind of uh, kind of strict with protein intake. Uh, do recommend adolescents. You know, if they're vegetarian, to eat lot more legumes and pulses and dals. Uh, Good quality protein is important. So, dahi, you know, buttermilk is good, paneer if they can have access to, you know, koa, like a lot of these tribal areas, I do see koa. Koa is that, you know, coming from uh, milk, you know. Uh, so, that is important. Uh, do tell them to have a lot more nuts and seeds. Now, if you remember that many of us, uh, you know, who grew up in uh, 80s and uh, 70s and 80s, you know, we used to have peanuts and uh, chana as a snack. Uh, which our children do not eat, believe me, they, they do not eat chana and uh, shing as a snack. What they eat? They eat those Lay's wafers, they will eat some, uh, you know, candies or chocolates or, you know, some of those fancy things. And even uh, poor and tribal children, I see them eating a lot of this packaged food, which is, which is available for 5 rupees, you know. Uh, so, please, uh, please explain to mother to do not uh, give those uh, junk food and even adolescent. So, if you look at a lot of this adolescent uh, uh, data, we do not have very good results on those adolescent uh, through CNNS we have now all this data, you know. And uh, lot of this uh, young girls and boys, 
they are not eating uh, you know kind of protein rich food, they are not eating animal based food, uh, eggs consumption is very low, you know uh, milk consumption is higher in boys than girls, girls should be drinking more milk actually you know. Um, also uh, not much fruits and vegetables, so please uh, recommend uh, you know children, adolescent to have a healthy food. Now there is one more data that we were evaluating uh, you know when we were re kind of presenting uh, CNS data to Gujarat government is uh, you know 20% uh, of children, uh, teenage boys and girls, 20% of them are pre-diabetic okay? and that is a huge number. So if you are 10 to 19 years, 20% are pre-diabetic. So obviously many more are insulin resistant because first they become insulin resistant and then they go into pre-diabetic phase and then diabetic phase. Okay? Uh, and even 5 to 9 years old children, they have pre-diabetes. So please remember your complementary food that I took session uh, in my last couple of weeks, uh, you know start those kind of food, no jaggery, no sugar, you know avoid a lot of this uh, seed oil, avoid fried food in children's diet, you know and that will kind of uh, create the foundation of good health. Okay? So do that and uh, adolescent as I said uh, focus on protein, focus on iron rich food. Uh, non veg food is of course uh, much better iron absorption because of heme iron that it has you know and also uh, focus on other nutrients which are like so for example bit vitamin B12. Now we do see a lot of B12 deficiency in uh, adolescents also in CNNS data. So do talk about you know uh, taking at least dairy in the diet you know the dairy will increase uh, B12. Uh, other food which are high in B12 is all your non veg food. So do tell children adolescents to kind of adopt a healthy lifestyle. Uh, with that healthy lifestyle of course uh, it, that comes the exercise and you know other things which will kind of make them much more uh, confident of who they are you know. But food is food is the main thing ok. So here I will be basically sharing our uh, recipe tutorials, uh, vegetarian recipes for adolescent and non veg recipes for adolescent ok. And I am also adding pre-pregnancy nutrition. Of course, uh, many of our mothers they become pregnant early on. So, you know, uh, this, this uh, pre pregnancy nutrition should be seen, uh, you know, starting from 16, 17, 18 years of age because, you know, if you actually look at real numbers, you know, we have many young adolescents. Uh, like a young, you know adolescent at 17, 18 years old uh, giving birth to babies. So the pre-pregnancy nutrition is really important. Uh, we have focused on uh, basically uh, folate, okay. folate comes from real food, uh, B12, uh, your choline, choline is important for a baby's brain, for baby's uh, neural tube uh, development. Uh, we already know about folate or folic acid but we do not know about uh, B12 and choline also as important in development of uh, neural tube. Okay. And another thing which is important is your uh, protein I recommend is zinc is another uh, nutrient, uh, omega 3 is another very important nutrient uh, for pre pregnancy and pregnancy nutrition. So pre pregnancy nutrition is pretty much like a pregnancy nutrition you know you are just preparing your, your body uh, to, to conceive and then to, to get that nutrition going to your, uh, to your fetus. Okay. So, uh, you know we have not repeated that uh, uh, tutorial for pregnant mothers, it is basically both pre pregnancy and pregnancy nutrition is pretty much the same. Okay. So thank you so much and enjoy yourself. Welcome to the spoken tutorial on vegetarian recipes for adolescents. In this tutorial we will learn what is adolescence, importance of nutrition during adolescence and how to prepare vegetarian recipes for adolescents such as soybean cutlet, sorghum and tomato chila, peanut curry, pearl millet and sorghum vegetable kichdi and stuffed paratha with sesame seed chutney. First, let us understand what is the period of adolescence. Adolescence is the period of transition from childhood to adulthood. 10 to 19 year old individuals are considered as adolescents. During this period, there are physical, sexual, mental and social developmental changes. Now let us look at the reasons for increased nutritional requirement during adolescence. First, there is a rapid increase in physical growth such as height and weight. Second, for providing nutritional support to the body during illness and pregnancy. During this period, adolescents may also go through emotional changes such as stress, anxiety and mood changes. 
also during adolescence there are social developmental changes for example there are changes in their lifestyle and food habits their food choices may be affected by what their friends like or dislike therefore good nutrition is important to support these developmental changes an adolescent female requires 2000 to 2400 calories and 40 to 55 grams of protein per day let us look at some healthy vegetarian recipes for adolescents before we begin note that in all the recipes being explained in this tutorial 1 cup is equal to 250 ml our first recipe is soybean cutlet for preparing this you will need 1/4 cup soybean 1/4 cup split bengal gram half beetroot 1/4 cup boiled peas 2 tablespoon peanut powder 1 teaspoon gram flour 1 teaspoon coriander powder half teaspoon red chili powder half teaspoon dry mango powder salt to taste 1 teaspoon drumstick leaves powder 2 teaspoon sesame seeds 1 teaspoon oil to begin we will first sprout the soybeans soak the soybeans in water overnight drain the water and keep them on a strainer to remove excess water keep the soybeans in a cool and dry place away from direct heat every day wash and drain the soybeans 2 to 3 times until sprouts appear this will avoid spoilage of soybeans It may take around 3 to 4 days for soybeans to sprout. Now, soak the split Bengal gram overnight. Strain it the next day in a strainer. In a pressure cooker, cook split Bengal gram and sprouted soybeans together. Use 1 cup of water and cook until one whistle. After cooling, blend soybeans and split Bengal gram to make a thick paste. Now, to make the drumstick leaves powder, roast the drumstick leaves on medium heat. Let it cool and make a powder of it using a mixer or a grinder. To prepare the cutlet mixture, in a bowl, take grounded soy beans and split Bengal gram. Add grated beetroot and boiled peas. Now add peanut powder, gram flour and drumstick leaves powder. Add rest of the spices and mix it well. Then make small round cutlets of it. Coat the cutlets evenly with sesame seeds on all sides. Now heat the oil in a pan and cook the cutlets from both the sides. Soybean cutlet is ready. This recipe is rich in protein, calcium, iron, magnesium, omega-3 fatty acid. Let us move on to our next recipe which is sorghum and tomato chila. For this recipe you will require half cup sprouted sorghum, 2 tablespoon gram flour, 1 teaspoon drumstick leaves powder, 1 tomato and half onion, 1 tablespoon curd, 1/2 teaspoon red chili powder. 1/2 teaspoon coriander powder, 1/2 teaspoon turmeric powder, salt as per taste, 1 teaspoon oil. Please note that the procedure to make leaf powder has been explained earlier in the same tutorial. First, we will prepare the sorghum powder using sprouted sorghum. Dry the sprouted sorghum in sunlight for a day or two. Now roast them on a low flame till it completely dries off. Next, make a powder of it using a stone grinder or a mixer. Now let us begin with the recipe. Take sorghum powder and gram flour in a bowl. Add rest of the ingredients and spices. Mix well and add water gradually. The batter should be thick pouring consistency. Heat a pan and grease it with oil. Pour a spoonful of batter on the pan and spread it in circular motion. Cook the chila on medium heat on both sides. Sorghum chila is ready. Sorghum is a good source of protein. magnesium zinc and fiber if sorghum powder is not available you can use finger millet powder or pearl millet powder or amaranth powder chila can be eaten with gooseberry chutney coconut chutney lemon pickle tomato chutney or curd gooseberries lemons tomatoes guava oranges are good sources of vitamin c try to have food rich in vitamin c with your meals This will enhance iron absorption in the body. Iron requirements are higher in adolescent females as compared to males due to menstrual blood loss. Let us move on to our next recipe which is peanut curry. To prepare this recipe you will need 1/2 cup peanuts, 1/2 cup ridge gourd, 1 medium sized onion, 1 small tomato, 4 to 5 pieces coconut, 1/2 teaspoon ginger garlic paste, 1/4 teaspoon red chili powder. 1/4 teaspoon coriander powder, 1/4 teaspoon turmeric powder, 
हाफ टी स्पून क्यूमिन सीड्स सॉल्ट एज पर टेस्ट वन टी स्पून ऑयल प्रोसीजर फर्स्ट सोक द पीनट्स इन वाटर ओवर नाइट नाउ प्रेशर कुक दैम इन वन कप ऑफ वाटर फॉर टू विसल्स मीन वाइल ग्राइंड द अनियन टोमेटो एंड कोकोनट टू मेक अ थिक पेस्ट हीट ऑयल इन अ कुकिंग पॉट एंड एड सम क्यूमिन सीड्स एंड जिंजर गार्लिक पेस्ट नाउ एड द ग्राउंडेड पेस्ट टू इट एड पीसेस ऑफ रिच गॉड एंड रेस्ट ऑफ द स्पाइसिस सॉटे इट फॉर टू मिनट्स Add the boiled peanuts in the cooking pot. Now, add half cup of water to make the gravy and cook on low flame for five minutes. Peanut curry is ready. In case peanuts are not available, you can also use white chickpeas, whole Bengal gram, kidney beans, cashew nuts. And if fridge gourd is not available, then you may use pumpkin, snake gourd, brinjal, or capsicum. Peanuts contain good quality fats. They are also excellent sources of proteins, magnesium, zinc and antioxidants. Nuts and legumes also contain folate. A adequate amount of folate during adolescence will help to prevent birth defects during pregnancy. Next, we will learn the recipe for pearl millet and sorghum vegetable khichdi. To prepare this recipe, you can use a combination of amaranth or kodo millet or finger millet or foxtail millet. Ingredients required for this recipe are one third cup pearl millet, one third cup sorghum, one third cup green gram, one tablespoon peanuts, half cup of mixed vegetables such as carrots, French beans, peas, half medium sized onion, half teaspoon cumin seeds, one teaspoon curry leaves powder, one four teaspoon red chilli powder, one four teaspoon turmeric powder, salt to taste, one teaspoon oil or ghee. Please note that the procedure for leaves powder has been explained earlier in the same tutorial. Procedure: First soak the pearl millet and sorghum in water overnight. Strain it the next morning and keep it aside. Heat oil or ghee in a pressure cooker. To it add cumin seeds and sliced onion. Add the vegetables, spices, salt and mix well. Saute it for 2 minutes. Add pearl millet, sorghum and green gram in the cooker. Now add 2 cups of water and cover the pressure cooker. Cook on high flame until 3 whistles. Then cook for 15 minutes on low flame. Pearl millet and sorghum vegetable khichdi is ready. This recipe is rich in protein, iron, calcium, magnesium and zinc. Now we come to our last recipe which is stuffed paratha with sesame seed chutney. To prepare this recipe you will require 1 cup whole wheat flour Half cup Bengal gram, half medium sized onion, half teaspoon carom seeds, one teaspoon flax seeds powder, half teaspoon dry mango powder, half teaspoon coriander powder, one fourth teaspoon red chilli powder, one lemon, salt to taste, two teaspoon oil or two teaspoon ghee. First, we will see how to make roasted Bengal gram powder. Heat a pan and roast Bengal gram for two to three minutes. Stir it continuously to avoid burning. Once it is roasted, keep it aside for cooling. Now grind the roasted Bengal gram into fine powder. Now to prepare the filling, first mix the roasted Bengal gram powder and chopped onions. Now add red chilli powder, dry mango powder, coriander powder, salt and mix well. Add some lime juice and water to bind the filling. Let us see how to prepare the paratha. Take whole wheat flour in another bowl and add flax seeds, carom seeds and salt. Add required amount of water and prepare a soft dough. Now divide the dough into balls. Roll out to make parathas and fill a portion of filling in the center. Enfold the filling properly and make flat balls. Now roll it again to make a paratha. Heat pan and cook the paratha from both sides. Stuffed paratha is ready. For the filling, if roasted Bengal gram is not available, you can use boiled split Bengal gram or sprouted boiled green gram the paratha can be served with sesame seed chutney for preparing sesame seed chutney you will need 1/4 cup sesame seeds 1 tablespoon split bengal gram 4 to 5 pieces of fresh coconut 3 to 5 pieces of tamarind 1 dried red chili 2 to 3 garlic pods 1 teaspoon cumin seeds salt to taste 1 teaspoon oil procedure heat oil in a pan Roast the sesame seeds, Bengal gram, garlic, coconut, red chilli, and cumin seeds. Roast it for two minutes. After removing it from flame, add salt and tamarind. 
Grind all the ingredients. Add half cup of water to make a smooth paste. Sesame seed chutney is ready. This recipe is rich in protein, calcium, magnesium, zinc and folate. These nutrients will help in muscle and skeletal development. It is important to get adequate amount of calcium through diet from an early age. Deficiency of calcium can lead to osteoporosis in females in later stages. All of the recipes in this tutorial are rich in nutrients which are required for adequate growth during adolescence. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thanks for joining. Welcome to the spoken tutorial on non-vegetarian recipes for adolescents. In this tutorial we will learn about what is adolescence, nutritional requirements during adolescence, preparation of non-vegetarian recipes such as egg spinach bhurji, mutton leg soup, mutton liver and lungs curry, minced chicken with dill leaves and fish curry. Let us first understand what is adolescence. Adolescence is the transition from childhood to adulthood. 10 to 19 year old individuals are considered as adolescents. During this period, the requirements of energy and proteins are high. Why? Because during this period there are physical, sexual, mental and social developmental changes. An adolescent female requires 2000 to 2400 calories and 40 to 55 grams of protein per day. Adequate amount of other micronutrients are also essential, such as iron, calcium, magnesium, zinc, folate, and vitamin B12. Importance of nutrition during adolescence has been explained in another tutorial of the same series. After learning all that is important during adolescence, we will start with the preparation of recipes. First recipe is egg spinach bhurji. You will need 1 egg, half cup spinach, 1 small sized onion, 1 green chilli, half teaspoon ginger garlic paste, half teaspoon turmeric, salt to taste, 2 teaspoon oil or butter. Procedure Heat oil or butter in a pan. Add ginger garlic paste, green chilli, and chopped onions. Saute the onions for 2 minutes. Now Add turmeric powder and the chopped spinach. Crack the egg into the pan. Mix all the ingredients well. Now let the egg cook for 2 minutes on medium flame. Egg spinach bhurji is ready to be served. Next is mutton leg soup. You will need 200 grams or 1 whole mutton leg, half medium sized onion, half teaspoon ginger garlic paste, Half teaspoon mixed whole spices, 1 teaspoon turmeric powder, salt to taste, 1 teaspoon Bengal gram flour. Wash and clean the mutton leg pieces thoroughly. Apply half teaspoon turmeric powder on the mutton leg pieces. Keep it aside for 15 to 20 minutes and wash it again. This will remove any smell from the leg pieces. In a pressure cooker, put the mutton leg pieces and chopped onions. Add whole spices ginger garlic paste, turmeric powder and salt. Add 1 cup of water and cover the pressure cooker. Cook it on high flame until 1 whistle. Then lower the flame and cook for 15 to 20 minutes. Allow the pressure from the cooker to release by itself and only then open it. Simultaneously, while leg pieces are being cooked in the cooker, mix Bengal gram flour with 2 tablespoon water to make a thin paste. Add the paste to the soup and stir it well. Bring the soup to boil and keep it on slow flame for 2 minutes. Mutton leg soup is ready. Next recipe is mutton liver and lungs curry. You will require 100 gram mutton liver and lungs, 1 medium sized onion, 1 medium sized tomato, 1 teaspoon ginger garlic paste, 1 tablespoon curd, 1 4 teaspoon turmeric powder, 1 teaspoon garam masala powder, Salt to taste, 2 teaspoon oil or ghee. Wash the mutton lungs and liver in water thoroughly. Heat oil in a pressure cooker. Add chopped onion and saute till it becomes light golden in color. 
Then add chopped tomatoes and ginger garlic paste and saute it. Now add the lungs and liver to it. Add the spices, curd and mix well. Saute it for 5 minutes. Add 1 cup of water and cover the pressure cooker. Cook it on medium flame for 15 minutes. Mutton liver and lung curry is ready and can be served with pearl millet roti or sorghum roti. If mutton lungs and liver is not available, you can also use chicken liver and chicken heart. The fourth recipe is minced chicken with dill leaves. Take 100 gram minced chicken, 1 cup dill leaves, half medium sized onion, half medium sized tomato, 1 teaspoon ginger garlic paste, half teaspoon red chilli powder, half teaspoon turmeric powder, 1 teaspoon garam masala powder, 1 fourth teaspoon coriander powder, salt to taste, 1 teaspoon oil or ghee. Heat oil in a cooking pot. Add onions and ginger garlic paste. Now saute till onions turn light golden. Add tomatoes, red chilli powder, turmeric powder and coriander powder. Mix well and add some salt. Next, add minced chicken when saute for 4 to 5 minutes. Pour half cup water and cover the pot. Cook on low flame for 5 minutes. Add chopped fresh dill leaves. Mix well and cook it on medium flame for 5 minutes. Minced chicken with dill leaves is ready. The last recipe is fish curry. Take 100 gram or 2 pieces of rohu, 1 small onion, 1 small tomato, 1 tablespoon peanuts, 3 to 4 pieces of coconut, 1 teaspoon cumin seeds, half teaspoon coriander powder, half teaspoon red chilli powder, 1 fourth teaspoon turmeric powder, salt to taste, 2 teaspoon oil or ghee. Note that this recipe can be prepared with any locally available fish of your area. Procedure Roast the peanuts on a pan on medium flame. Stir them continuously to avoid burning. Then keep them aside to cool. Rub the peanuts between your palms to remove the outer cover. Grind onion, tomato, peanuts, cumin seeds and coconut into a paste. Heat oil in a cooking pot and add the paste. Add red chilli powder, turmeric powder, coriander powder and salt. Saute it for 2 to 3 minutes. Now add the fish pieces and 1 cup of water. Bring it to a boil. Cover the vessel and cook it on a low flame for 5 minutes. You can add chopped coriander leaves on top for garnishing. Fish curry is ready. All of these recipes are good source of nutrients such as protein, fat, iron, vitamin B12, zinc, magnesium and folate. Let us look at the health benefits of these recipes. Firstly, chicken, fish, eggs, mutton are all excellent sources of complete protein. Secondly, iron present in non-vegetarian food is easily absorbed. Iron requirements are higher in female adolescents because of menstrual blood loss. Low iron levels can cause fatigue, pale skin and increased risk of infections. Iron is required for growth in lean muscle mass and blood cell volume. Third, fish like mackerel, salmon, tuna, cod, Herring and sardines are good sources of omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids is needed for brain and visual development. Interestingly, only non-vegetarian food, milk and milk products contain vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 is required for red blood cell formation, energy production and neurological functioning. It also helps in healthy development of fetus during pregnancy. Also, meat and eggs are good sources of zinc. Zinc is essential during adolescence for growth, cognition and sexual maturation. Therefore, it is of utmost importance to have a well-balanced meal. A combination of different non-vegetarian and vegetarian food should be included in our diet. This brings us to the end of the tutorial. Thank you for watching. Welcome to the spoken tutorial on pre-pregnancy nutrition.
In this tutorial, we will learn about nutritional requirements during reproductive age and pre-pregnancy period. Let us first begin with protein. Protein is required for growth and maintenance of muscle tissue. It aids in cell repair and bone development as well as for joints. It helps in improving immunity and maintaining a healthy liver and also provides energy. Protein forms chemicals which helps in digestion, breakdown of toxins in the body, maintaining blood sugar and carrying signal to and from the brain. Deficiency of protein leads to diminished growth of fetus for its age, poor height, memory and motor skills in the baby along with high risk of infection. In adults, it leads to wrinkling of skin, hair fall, tiredness and weakness, frequent infections and muscle loss. Another protein called keratin is an important part of hair, nails and skin. Interestingly, the protein is made up of different substances called amino acids. There are in total 22 amino acids out of which 9 amino acids have to be taken from the diet. Let us now look at the two types of protein which are the complete protein and the incomplete protein. All 9 amino acids mentioned earlier are present in animal proteins. That is why animal proteins are called as complete proteins. On the other hand, in plant-based proteins, some of these 9 necessary amino acids are in lesser amounts. For example, cereals are low in lysine while pulses are low in methionine. It is therefore important to consume different plant proteins together in combinations. For example, grains and pulses should be consumed in a combination as they both will provide enough quantities of necessary amino acids. Now we will learn about another important nutrient, fat. Good fats from food are important for good health. There are some fats that cannot be produced by the body like omega-3 fatty acids. Hence they should be taken from the diet. These fats maintain heart health, reduce inflammation in the body and can help to improve the chances of getting pregnant. They also reduce the risk of premature birth of the baby and increase intelligence in the baby. After learning about protein and fat, we will now learn about vitamin A. Vitamin A helps to maintain healthy eyes. It regulates cell growth, increases the chances of pregnancy and improves immunity during pre-pregnancy period. Like vitamin A, the entire vitamin B complex plays a crucial role in strength and health of women in all the stages of life. Among all the B vitamins, we will first look at vitamin B6 pyridoxin. Vitamin B6 pyridoxin is required for functioning of the nervous system, thereby improving the brain development. Also, it may provide relief from pregnancy-related nausea. Yet another nutrient is vitamin B12 which along with folate and choline helps to prevent anemia and neural tube defects. Neural tube defects are birth defects that affect the spine and central nervous system of the baby which are formed during the first month of pregnancy. Note that a neural tube is a part of the fetus that develops into the brain and spinal cord. Hence, it is important to have enough folate vitamin B12 and choline in the body before getting pregnant. Deficiency of vitamin B12 also leads to anemia, infertility and miscarriage. Now, we will learn about another important nutrient, folate. Folate, which is also known as vitamin B9, helps the body to make healthy new cells. These cells carry oxygen from lungs to all parts of the body. Deficiency of folate in pregnant mothers leads to anemia and defects of the brain and spine called neural tube defects. Note that neural tube defects has been explained earlier in the same tutorial. We will now learn about the role of iron. Iron is required for formation of hemoglobin in the blood 
and for fetal growth. Low levels of hemoglobin in pregnancy can lead to high blood pressure during pregnancy, preterm delivery, low birth weight baby and miscarriages. Apart from this, hemoglobin helps to transport oxygen to other tissues and cells. Low levels of hemoglobin or iron leads to anemia. Moreover, iron may be low in women due to monthly menstruation, worm infestation, diet low in iron and poor absorption due to phytic acid and oxalates in the food. In order to decrease phytic acid and oxalates and to increase absorption of nutrients, use pre-cooking methods like soaking, sprouting, roasting and fermentation. Signs of iron deficiency anemia are tiredness and lack of energy, breathlessness, increase in heart rate and pale skin. Remember, with iron, always consume vitamin C rich foods as it will help in iron absorption. Vitamin C also enhances immunity and thus reduces infections. Next, we will learn the importance of calcium and vitamin D. It is suggested to consume calcium as it helps in development of bones. The fetus requires calcium for bone and teeth development. Low levels of calcium can cause weak bones. However, remember that vitamin D is required to absorb calcium in the body. The best way to obtain vitamin D is exposure to sunlight between 11 am to 3 pm for 15 to 20 minutes. Next, we will learn about choline. Choline is important for brain development of the baby as it enhances memory and attention span. Deficiency of choline leads to fatty liver in adults, miscarriages and neural tube defects in fetus, which are mentioned earlier in this tutorial. Let's move ahead and learn the importance of zinc. Zinc is important for immunity and cell growth. It helps in making genetic material and protein in the body. It helps in healing of wounds. Also, it contributes to ovulation and fertility in women and it is important for growth of the fetus. Note that lack of dietary zinc can affect the sense of taste and smell, delay the growth of placenta, which is a cord that transports nutrients from mother to the fetus. Lack of zinc also affects the growth of embryo and results in low birth weight baby. Another significant nutrient that we will look at is iodine. Iodine is required by the body to maintain normal levels of thyroid hormone which are produced by the thyroid gland. Deficiency of iodine in mother leads to increased risk of miscarriage and stillbirth of the baby. It can also lead to birth deformities, low birth weight, stunted growth and mental retardation in the baby. Magnesium is another nutrient which helps to calm the nervous system. It prevents cramps and migraine headaches by relaxing the blood vessel in the brain. It also maintains healthy blood pressure and rhythm of the heart. It helps in production of genetic material and enhances bone development. Apart from a healthy nutrition for a healthy pregnancy, it is important to avoid alcohol as it can lead to miscarriage or weak embryo. Other things to be avoided are tobacco, cigarettes, drugs, self-medication, excessive use of sugar, tea and coffee, junk food and sweetened beverages. As these substances can affect reproductive health and have adverse effects on pregnancy. Note that it is also important to manage weight before becoming pregnant. Underweight women give birth to small babies or preterm babies which are born during 7 to 8 months of pregnancy. Such babies are at highest risk of premature deaths. However, on the other hand, women with increased weight have high risk of gestational diabetes and blood pressure. Also, it can lead to neonatal complications. Therefore, women should consult a healthcare provider to maintain a healthy weight before getting pregnant. Along with this, it is very important to consume a healthy, well-balanced diet containing vegetarian and or non-vegetarian foods.
remember that all non-veg foods are rich in protein, omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin B12, vitamin B9, zinc, iron, calcium, choline and vitamin D. Along with animal derived food, plant derived foods, pulses, millets, cereals, nuts and seeds will help in formation of immune system, muscles, bones, liver, hair, skin, eyes and brain. Apart from these, dairy products will also aid in formation of bones and teeth of the baby. Alternately, leafy vegetables and seeds are also rich in calcium and help in formation of bones and teeth of the baby. Like leafy vegetables, fruits are also rich in vitamin C and they help in improving immunity, absorption of iron and prevent infections. For fertility of the women and growth of the baby, beans, nuts and seeds should be consumed along with other non-veg foods. Various non-veg food and animal derived foods like fish, dairy, eggs help to maintain normal thyroid hormone, improve growth and prevent physical defects. Nuts and seeds are rich in magnesium and are essential for functioning of nervous system and prevention of leg cramps. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thank you for joining.